For more episodes of the Games Raw podcast, check out our website, www.gamesrawpodcast.com. You can also follow us at twitter.com forward slash games for all, or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash games for all podcast. The Games Raw podcast is brought to you in association with HostGator. For all your web host needs, check out hostgator.com. Welcome to the Games for All podcast, episode 91. I'm your host, James Craigie, and I'm joined, as always, by the lovely... Michelle Barry. Oh, and... <laughs> Me, Daniel Young. Hello. He's back, back. people. Yeah, I've, I've um, back from a long sort of holiday, I suppose. What yeah. do you call it? Paternity leave, maybe. <laughs> we'll call it yeah. that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call it that. We'll call uh, it that. So, uh, so you uh, want me to step down now? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hosting. Take All those right. shoes off. <laughs> I'm off on holiday. No, no, bye, bye, people. No place, bitch. Uh, so... <laughs> Other than that little uh, kind of stint we did on UGN the other week, yep. which I urge people to check out, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, yeah, I'm back, baby. It's good to have you back. Oh, thanks, man. I want to I thank both of you because you've done a really, really amazing job the last, I don't know how many weeks, six, seven weeks. Well, weeks. I think we've done an amazing job probably about three or four yeah, weeks. Yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it was, a little, it was a little hit and miss to begin with, but you kind of find your feet. No, no, I'm very, I'm very pleased and proud of you guys for... for Kind of, uh, you know, taking Yay. over and doing such a good job. Yeah, well, I think now I can actually be an adequate co-host <laughs> rather than just a thorn in your side. Yeah, fair do. <laughs> okay, so um, it's uh, before we actually get started with the show, we have yes. a pretty big announcement to make, um, and it's kind of, I kind of come bearing bad news. <laughs> You are uh, the harbinger of doom. I am, and uh, I'm going to urge people to really listen right now to what I'm about to say. We are. We've had a lot of uh, thinking time uh, over the last so many weeks, and we've come to the decision that we are going to end this podcast. Um, and I'll go into details in a minute. We are going to record shows up till the end of April. I think it's like the 25th, 26th of April is going to be our last episode. And uh, So basically, we're going to end on episode 100. We wanted to do that for ourselves so we can say yeah. we did 100 episodes of that show. And I think we owe it to people who have stayed with us and subscribed and listened to our show to put out, not just to say, by the way, uh, this is our show, you know, just kind of, um, so we're going to have 10 more shows, this is included in the 10, um, so we are planning some cool stuff for the last show though, yeah. um, our reasons for doing it, basically that, obviously it's a brand new year, we've got all kinds of new commitments, I mean, not just myself, obviously I've, I've got an extra member of my family and stuff, and you know, um, you guys have got stuff you're doing in your spare time that yeah. kind of, um, I mean, we've had to move the night of recording a little bit because of personal stuff and it's just becoming one of those things where um you're not to bring it down on things but like it's, yeah, it's yeah. getting a little bit more difficult than we'd like it to be to yeah. put out shows every week um i think we've had a really good run of it though to be fair i think yeah the definitely. only weeks we've missed have been like the, over the holidays which is our planned hot, like scheduled holiday sort of thing yeah. so we've pretty much been constantly a show every week for almost two years now um oh, don't say that no, it, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty crazy but we are it's not the end of things completely. We are going to be putting out content in the form of a blog. We started a Tumblr blog, and I'm going to give details of that out um, now, actually. I think you can find us at thegamesforallpodcast.tumblr.com. I do believe it is, and I will correct that if that's wrong. Um, but basically, there is where we're going to be doing stuff like we'll be putting out occasional videos, little bits and pieces, um, anything news related that we think is good. And we're going to put it out in blog form, and hopefully that will link back to our Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook or on Twitter, you'll get all that information. So we're still going to put out tiny bits of content, some kind of like mini webisodes and stuff like that. Um, it's all going to be tied in with YouTube and things like that. So we are going to be putting out content, just not an audio podcast every week and we won't be doing games for lecture as well uh and the website will be going offline uh i think early june so basically yeah it's all kind of gonna kind of end ish yeah. uh, we will still have a presence um but the good news is and i will reveal now that we are working on a brand new show it's kind of the in a way it's kind of the show we wanted to do for quite a while now yeah um and that's not really going to happen for another year. It's going to probably, the first episode will probably go out February, March next year. So we've got a long time because obviously, you know, at the moment things are hectic. By this time next year, we'll probably have the time to kind of uh, commit to do 
doing a regular show. Excuse me, I almost threw up in my mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it's, um, you know, we, we, we'll have the time to kind of commit to things a bit more then. Um, so we're going to be doing another show and it, I can reveal it's a video podcast that we're planning to do yeah. and we'll be covering a bit more than just video games. So that's mm-hmm. all I'm going to say on that. But we'll obviously be putting out, um, you know, with, with the content we'll be putting out after the show ends, more details about that kind of stuff. So this time next year, hopefully we'll be doing some a brand new show with a different name. <laughs> so, um, but we want to thank everybody who has, um, you know, subscribe to us listen to our episodes and continue to do so um because it's it's only fair to them that we put out enough uh rich content i say rich not really rich but content <laughs> enough content uh, foofy foofy content <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah we're gonna do up to 100 episodes we've got some really cool stuff planned for our last episode so yeah let's make the next 10 something shit hot yeah absolutely so let's start the show let's start the show as normal with what we've been playing mm. Well, you've been off for a while, so you've yeah. been playing a bit. Okay, well... I know you've kind of been a bit busy. A little bit busy. But... Well, you know, I'm going to start with uh, the games I've bought but haven't played yet. Okay. <laughs> so what I haven't been playing, I picked up the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, oh. haven't played it, haven't played it at all. Picked up Never Dead, haven't played it because I heard it was shit. Somebody told me that after I bought it. Awesome. Uh, I picked up Catherine, oh, no, I have been playing that a little bit. I did talk about that on, our, on UGN when we were on there the other week. Uh, what else did I pick up? Uh, well, what I have been playing, and what I've actually finished, is uh, The Darkness 2. Oh, so I'm going to talk about that, because there's been a bit of a void on that. You did talk about the demo yeah. several weeks back when it came out. Yeah. And I was sat there listening to the episode, thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got my thoughts on that, I can't really chime in. But um, I have my hands on the full game, played it, and... Sorry, The Darkness 2. It's the... Sequel, to, Sequel the to The Darkness, which came out, I think, 2007, which yeah. was a pretty tough year because there's a lot of great games came out that year. Yeah, I think it's probably one of my favourite games of this generation, if I'm honest with you. I think it got seriously overlooked for, like, Game of the Year. But when you think of how it was up against Call of Duty 4 and Mass Effect, so yeah. stiff competition. And it came out very early in the year as well, so it kind of got forgotten by a lot of people. But here's, here's the thing. I'm a big fan of the first game. We've, you know, we spoke about how I was excited for this game when it was announced. When you know there was that big announcement, we spoke about it on the show. Um, this, you know, I've been looking for a sequel for this game for a while, and you know, it's it's hard, it's hard because like there's so much stuff I loved about the first game that they seem to have kind of just completely scrapped anything kind of innovative, interesting, kind of fresh that was you know about the first game. It doesn't exist in this game at all. It's from a completely different developer for a start. Um, you know, these are the things I don't like about it. I'll kind of get that out of the way first. But, like, it's, you know, the first game had this kind of, it, it, well, it was a first-person shoot, but by no means it, was, it wasn't it was an open-world game, but it had that kind of feel to it. You had the um, the subway, which was kind of your hub to go to from place to place. And it felt like a fairly living, breathing city where you could kind of walk around, talk to people, interact with phones and things, you know what I mean? Just There's loads of things to do, loads of little side quests you could do. Um, none of that's in this game. It's very linear, very mm. straightforward FPS stuff, which is kind of annoying. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of the really interesting stuff about the first game that they've stripped that all together. And that, for me, is kind of a disappointment. And I'm sure for a lot of the fans of the first game, it will be the same. Here's the things that work about it, though. The art style is fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I yeah. Um, It's one of the standout things about this game, for sure, by a long way. Even though towards the end of the game, it starts to look a little bit ropey. I don't know whether it's just, like, my, my 360 it was, like, throwing a wobbly or something, but some of the textures were really a little bit off. Um, but, no, the art style is amazing. And obviously, because it's a comic book property, it fits, it works well. That's one of the things I prefer over the original game. Uh, sprinting, that's brilliant i like sprinting around <laughs> sprinting around's good uh and the uh quad wielding that's amazing and it works so well and for something like an idea that that's in in, in your head it kind of when they announced it, it was like oh, that's pretty complicated the controls have got to be spot on otherwise this is just going to be awful and it is spot on the controls yeah. i can't fault them they are it, it does what you want it to do and, and, that, and that's, that's one of the things thing. i liked about the demo yeah is how everything yeah you kind of, you kind of felt it's natural. intuitive as well yeah it's totally intuitive you after a few you try everything out you kind of yeah great i know what to do now um yeah other than that the game itself story is not great it's a continuation of the story it has its little twists and turns it definitely has an ending um 
I kind of did see coming from halfway. They kind of made a big hint towards what's going to happen at the end. Uh. And although it's a really good twist, to be fair, uh, they kind of blew the lid on it too early, and it's kind of like, uh, I kind of guessed this is going to happen. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, the gameplay's fun. I mean, that's the only thing. I think that's one of the saving graces of it, is that it is fun to play. It is repetitive, but the game's short, so it kind of doesn't outstay its welcome. Okay. You've got this whole kind of subplot within the story of this kind of, you're in this asylum, and is it real? And it's kind of very worn flow of the cuckoo's nest. Oh, in fact, there's actually a, an achievement called Worn Flew Over. But like, um, yeah, so they've done some interesting things with the story. The art style's great, like I said before. And there is there is something there for people, for fans of the original, and he, he want to kind of continue the story and, and, want, and want to know what happens and stuff. But um, yeah, I think for the hardcore fans, it, it could put a lot of people off. I don't think there's a lot of people who are going to really like this game that much. But I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. Um, I haven't tried the Vendettas mode, which is like the co-op mode, where you get to play as different characters and stuff. But I will be trying it out at some point. Uh, but overall, I really, I enjoyed it still, even though it had none of the cool shit from the first game. And I was I was quite disappointed about that. But I, I think it's worth picking up if you don't mind it being a short game that is kind of repetitive. Okay, so it's sort of kind of a sort of a taster or sort of a, a morsel of kind of maybe testing the water to see if people are still interested in the franchise. Do you? Yeah, reckon? I mean, it's, it's definitely open for a third. That's, Without a doubt, yeah, there is definitely plans for a third game. <laughs> um, it's cool. kind of funny because at the end it kind of fucks you over because at the end you get a choice, and depending on your choice, the, the game either just ends there, or you get to play a f- like a full another twenty minutes of the game and get an extra achievement. So if you make the wrong choice, you kind of have to go back and play part of it to get to the choice. I think you know, and then. But luckily, I made the right choice. <laughs> <Excellent. You know? laughs> it's pretty obvious what you got to do. I'm just saying, but yeah. it's kind of it's a weird game because I'm such a big fan of the first one and kind of feel like that is definitely the superior game. But if that game, if the first game had that art style, had the sprint, had the quad wielding, had all that kind of course, cool, the combat in this game is good. If it had all that stuff, then the fucking first Darkness would have been perfect, a perfect game, without a doubt. That's cool. Well, here's hoping for the Darkness Three. Yeah, I've got hope that they'll kind of add some more stuff in. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Michelle? What have I been playing? Well, we know what you've been playing. Yeah. For the last few weeks now. How yeah. are you getting on with that? A bit frustrated at points. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I, no, but the thing is just like... Because obviously, I know I've said about the whole guide thing, but I want to play this game. I want to get it right, because I've balls it up the first time. Yeah, fair enough. I get that. And I think it's some things <laughs> are just fucking ridiculous. Yeah, you, you asked me. Um, yeah, no, it was like... It would it would tell you how to do like a certain battle to be able to complete it, and I'd do it the way it'd tell me, and I'd still fucking lose. Nah. I'm like fuck it, I'm doing it my own way, and then you know, you win. I win. <laughs> there you go. It's like fuck the book, I'll carry yeah, on just with do it. it your own so, way. But I think it's just things like leveling up with like weapons and upgrading, and then because uh, obviously I looked through the book and on how to do it, and I went, I'm fucking confused. Yeah, you you, t- you turned <laughs> to me and said, <laughs> so you said, how do you level the weapons? I'm like, oh, I'll just look it up for you. I looked it up, I read through the guides, I read through people doing it, and I was like, what the fuck? I paid nine ninety nine <laughs> for this shit. This it's again, like, because obviously you have like a page for every character of all their weapons and how you do it and everything, and I was just like, what? I don't fucking understand. It <laughs> is like the most convoluted leveling yeah. system Jeez. I think ever imagined. Just to level up the weapons. Yeah. But now, of, I mean, at least I don't have to worry till chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 I'm on we, chapter 8, all right? Okay, <laughs> okay. Cool. we're saving it for there. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Pretty much. You know, as soon as I finish that, you'll know what will be coming next anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've only got 10 more shows left, so... I've got to, I've got to finish this with <laughs> yeah. 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 If you can finish 13 too by, by the end of... I mean, it, Ooh, by the end of another, it. Nine, another nine weeks or so, you know. I yeah. think if she can finish 13 and <laughs> <Yeah>. start <laughs> that'd be 13 to <laughs> well, yeah. that'd be awesome. All right, cool. Um, I have a little bit of variety. Um, question. Yeah. Does it involve Mass Effect? Uh, a little tiny bit. Okay. Well, I said I'd talk about it. Yeah, it's a multiplayer demo. It's a multiplayer demo, but I'll get to that. Um, picked up Xenogears Chronicles, which I know the peeps over at UGN are very jealous about. Nah. <laughs> But, you know, they are getting it. They're getting it in April. We've yeah. had it since August last year. <laughs> Sorry, when? August last year. I got it, got it quite early then. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it came out in Japan. It was going to be Japan only. 
And then yeah. sort of the Americans were outcrying because Zano Gears, Zano Cyber. So they were just like, fuck it, Europe can have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, we'll try it out in Europe first, yeah. see if they like it. And, and we did, so. Okay, cool. But um, we game sort of in the vein of the old classic JRPG. I know this is the sort of thing most people growing at, but mm. I kind of like it. Okay. It's got, it's got an interesting kind of plot setting. Controls work well. It's a nice looking at it. It's got this sense of scale and scope, which you don't get in a lot of Wii games. It feels really open and oh, large. <laughs> and you get these huge kind of grass planes and everything. And I don't want to give too much away, but this is like the opening part of the game. Basically, it says the whole world is got completely covered by oceans, and then these two giant mechs fight. There's like the organic one and a mechanical one. Well, I'm kind of interested now. Yeah, hmm. they fight and then they kind of deliver the death blows and they just kind of die. Oh, okay, you're not interested in And that. then... <laughs> no. And then you sort of cut to, like, so, ha- however many eons later and there's, like, this big war going on between people and these robots and all that and hmm. they're kind of, like, fighting. There's this huge battle and then at the end of that section it kind of pulls out and you realise they're fighting on the sword of one of the mechs and the whole world is basically grown up over the corpses of these giant machines yeah cool that actually sounds so, pretty awesome yeah. yeah yeah it's awesome I wouldn't be playing it but it does sound pretty no, cool no I'll, I'll be playing it so that's fine <laughs> fair enough <laughs> um, also the binary domain demo came oh, out okay, last week yeah I downloaded this and the SSX demo and, yeah I haven't played the and SSX and the syndicate demo and a few others that I, I just haven't got around to playing that's no, all but the, the, yeah the, there's a list of things I'll be trying to do like a new demo every week <laughs> yeah but um Binary Domain. Mm. It's this game, we saw the trailer, thought, oh, that's a well-put-together trailer. The game's probably going to be shit. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, there's certain things, certain cutscene, something about the textures just doesn't feel right. right. It's like the hair. It feels like an old-school game. There's something about the shadows and the hair and everything. Okay, well, fun. it looks a little bit ray yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. What about the actual game, though? It's not as bad really? <laughs> as I thought it would be. Okay. It's pretty much, it is Gears of War meets iRobot. Mm. And the first control- bit's cool. Yeah, yeah. The controls are solid. Yeah, it's fucking hard though. I mean, I played yeah. it on the normal setting, and then I had to play it again on the easy setting, and I still fucking died. <laughs> they haven't got a pussy setting. No, no. <laughs> okay. No, no I mean, I, I, I've, I've downloaded it because I was intrigued. Because obviously, like you say, we, we saw the trailer for it, and we've kind of been in private, kind of thinking. To us, like, aside from the show, you've not been talking about it, but like. We've been sort of saying how shit we think this game's going to be, and um, so yeah, now there's a demo. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll grab that and see. I haven't had a chance to play it, but yeah. if you say it's not too bad, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to give it a honestly, go. Honestly, it's not too bad. I mean, you can see sort of like the freedom. You get choices if you have this team. You can pick which members come with you, and obviously elements of the story change depending on there. And you have hmm. like squad commands that you can bring up to like get them to cover you. Or so I like that stuff. That's treat that and cool. stuff. And if you get shot, you have like med packs and stuff, yeah. and you can inject yourself to kind of it give yourself an adrenaline. It sounds pretty awesome. To be but you fair. can also call other people to come and help you. Yeah. Hmm. And it is pretty cool. And there is a very definite iRobot mm. kind of feel about yeah, it, though. That's the sort but of stuff you see, know. what most people don't realise is robots, they feel no pain, <laughs> they feel no injury, they will carry on regardless. Think like Terminators. Terminator, yeah, they yeah. are hard to take down yeah. okay. seriously I mean I actually yeah I wasn't too fast but I actually kind of want to play it now you've kind of yeah I, I enjoy it. it it's the game that if I had it there I probably won't buy it yeah but, you know yeah. I might rent it or something mm. or get a chance to play it somehow Interesting. and I would I would sit and play through it because I can't like it I have no idea the second part because you get like a choice of two missions the second part you have this weird French android helper no I don't think that's <laughs> Good. With a neckerchief, <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's pretty odd. But no, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued now. I, I quite like it. I, I would like to give it a go. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll play the demo if I think it's good enough. I may, I may pick it up. Probably not straight away. Yes. Now mm. the big thing what I've been playing. Now I haven't been playing a lot of it because I don't want to get so far into it. Because there are people on the demo now who have leveled the characters up to like level forty. Which is like higher level than you can get to in Mass Effect 2. But um, I don't want to get too far into it because I have to start again with the full game. <laughs> really? But yeah. That's, that sucks. Yeah. There's plenty of other... Well, I think you have to start again. Yeah. If you can carry on, I'll kick myself in the arse. But... Um... <laughs> we should video that. <laughs> You're yeah. kicking yourself in the arse. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer demo. I went from hating it 
right. them explaining it a bit, thinking, oh, it could work. Mm. Then I actually got a chance to play it, and fuck me, it's good. Okay. A lot of people have been cool. saying this. A lot of people have said, like, the Horde gameplay, because mm. that's what it feels like. You fight off ten waves of enemies, and a lot of people have been thinking, oh, that's getting a bit stale. We've seen that in so many things yeah. now. This does something to keep it interesting. A lot of people who didn't want, like, a Horde wave mm. thing have played it and thought, oh, this is actually fairly fresh. This is fairly new. What's fresh about it? Well, in particular... In particular, you have, like, your classes and stuff, like, in the main game that you can level. Yeah. And, you know, that changes the tactics. You have to work together as a team. Certain people are good at certain things. So it mixes it up rather mm. than having, like, the g- generic. Yeah, you can everybody, use any yeah, weapon. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Enemies are smart. They organize. They flank. They they don't just kind of, like, come at you. They they plot and they plan and they're devious and they're arseholes, especially the fucking space and injury dudes. Okay. But, um... No, it's really good. It, it can be quite difficult, but every wave or so often they'll throw in like an extra challenge, like hold this position for so long yeah, or yeah. activate these consoles or take out these targets and everything. And it's kind of like... So you get a sort of like... Mini missions within yeah, like, uh, yeah, okay, okay. the things. And, you know, it, it does kind of keep... It feels story-driven. Mm. It actually feels like it could be part of yeah. the main game. Especially the ob- objective driven stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's, that's all right. It's and the controls are like, I mean, it, but, yeah. yeah, I I I mentioned sort of last week the controls and everything sort of being tweaked and being more twitchy. It feels it. They've kind of not really made Mass Effect like a big shooter. It's kind of always come second to like the RPG, and they tried to make it more of a shooter in the second one. Yeah, but no, they've really sort of nailed it this time. It's like a really competent third person shooter, and it's fun to play, and it looks gorgeous. Awesome. But another, I've done it, I haven't played it yet. Yeah. But another thing I like is um, you unlock stuff by buying it in the store. Right. Yeah, you you get so many credits during missions, and you can buy stuff. But each pack you buy, you only have like two different packs: the cheapy one and an expensive one. Yeah. The stuff you get in it is randomized. Right. So as you level up and as you gain stuff, you buy it and you unlock stuff. But it might be completely different to what somebody else has got. Mm. So. There's always that variety. You never get two people oh, cool. the same. So, mm. you know, it mixes it up a bit and it makes you want to play more because you want to say, oh, I want to unlock one of these. So if I keep playing, keep buying yeah, these yeah. kits, I'll, I'll, I'll get that eventually. And, ooh, there it is. And... <laughs> <laughs> ooh, there it is. I was waiting for that. <laughs> and, you know, and then you think, all right, now I've got this. I want to do that. And, yeah, it, it, it it's kind of like crack. <laughs> you have a little taster and you just can't Once stop. Once again, we were talking about crack on the show. Yeah, um, I, know, I know. But a um, good we, friend of ours, Joe. Some crack? <laughs> no, he's not on crack. <laughs> but, <laughs> we're still talking about that. <laughs> no. But um, he, he does all the artwork for our site and everything. Yeah. And we're hoping, Joe, this is our way of saying we're hoping it to enlist you <laughs> in our next podcast project. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what a way to ask <laughs> on the show! I, know. <laughs> I, know, I, know I was kind of listen. thinking in person would be good, but you know, yeah, I, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know he listens to the show. <laughs> he might not listen this week. <laughs> I'll okay. make him listen. Okay, um, but no, he. I don't think he was too keen on the idea of multiplayer. Yeah, it's he, not something you want tacked on to. A, no, I good. mean that's kind of like for me when they added multiplayer to Bioshock, with obviously Bioshock Two and stuff. Yeah. Um, I I never fucking played it, but I heard it was all right. I mean, you know, that's that kind of thing. For that's that's kind of how I made it. Because Bioshock, the first one, had no multiplayer, didn't need it. You you sort of think, what does it add to the yeah, game? Exactly. And I know he was a bit skeptical, and he played it, and he tried the multiplayer, and damn, he loves it. He's proper that's addicted. Cool. He, he uh, plays it. He's so. probably he's going to get a lot of people who wouldn't normally play multiplayer type games or online multiplayer games to try that kind of stuff out and yeah. and actually kind of. Yeah. Play online. Some people will avoid it like the play. Some people will try it and probably quite like it. And then you get added bonuses in the single player game from playing the multiplayer. So mm. that's it. Anyway, that's a, that's all she wrote on that. Well, that's the end of the first section of the show. Uh, it's been wow. That's long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot to talk about, huh? Yeah, okay. a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll, we'll gonna... make up for it in the yeah, next sure. part. Uh, so we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we talk about the news. Hello and welcome back to the Games for All podcast. It's now over to Michelle with the news. Yes, okay, so the first story, Journey releases, Journey release confirmed, sorry. Yeah, we talked about it last week, about sort of speculation and rumour. It is definitely coming out in March. Awesome. 
Uh, 14th here in the UK. I think it's the 13th in the US. Nice. Only an American pricing of $14.99. Yep. Which equates here to £9.49. But they'll ramp it up to nine ninety nine. They'll probably ramp it up to fucking twelve ninety nine or something. Well, probably. maybe, but I don't care because I'm going to get this. I've been wanting this. For it a does look time. pretty cool. Uh, I got to admit, um, it's one of those few. It's very rare that there's many titles that make me want to still own a PS3. Not being funny, yeah. but I mean things like Uncharted three and things like that. that's the stuff that wants me. But then there's a lot. There's even fewer downloadable titles that kind of make me want to. But this is. Pretty interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm, I want to. I want to see this in action. Games is art, Holmes. <laughs> yeah. So um, no, that's cool. 14th of March or 13th, yeah. depending on where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next story. Okay, so Double Fine Kickstarter totaled reached two million dollars. I can't yeah. fucking believe this. You were talking about this last week, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that's a fucking awesome way to fund a game for a start. Yeah. Genius. It Absolutely is. genius. Absolutely. And only from the mind of. Um, Tim Schafer. Yeah, no, it's, it's, and this is the exact fucking developer I would expect this from as well. Yeah. Um, two million. This game's going to be fucking awesome. The way yeah. it's going, I mean, we'll be back next week when it's like four million or some shit. Probably. I, I mean, mean it, it goes planned. way into like March, I think, March 13th, I think, mm. if I remember correctly. <laughs> it carries on Crazy. too. You can keep donating. Holy shit. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I mean they ha- they they've have, got more than yeah. enough money than they need so yeah. they can really... Fucking decent yeah, with they this. they had a target of four hundred thousand, which they reached within the first eight hours. Within mm. twenty four hours, it was at a million. Yeah, that's, <laughs> just, that's insane. So, that's insane. Yeah, but they've said it's now going cross platform. It'll be on PC, Android, iOS, Mac, and Linux. Sorry, there's going to be um, full localization. Full localization. That's the one. <laughs> In English, French, German, Spanish, and Italian, it's going to have voice acting, proper soundtrack, and all translated into uh, these languages. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fucking cool, <clears throat> and it's funded by the game. I say, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. You know, yeah. uh, like you said, I think more developers are probably going to go for this now. They see that they're fun- <laughs> what a game fun- pay for it. Raise <laughs> two mil, and I think I think I think it helps <clears throat> that it's um. From the team that did Monkey Island, mm. and it's a point-and-click adventure. Yeah, I mean, so, so you know, know, it's yeah, you know be... what they're doing. It's not like yeah. you're, you're putting it in hands of total idiots or anything. Yeah, yeah. And um, Michelle, I'll be using your Mac to get this. I'm sorry, I will give you the money for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you can, we're, you can we're play it on your um, uh, fucking iPod. Oh, um, my iPod doesn't work no more. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right, so next story, Mass Effect 3 launches early. Launches in early. Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, I think, I've uh, tried to stay away from Mass Effect stories because I know it bugs yeah, you. Yeah, and so. I knew damn well I wouldn't be able to stay away from this one. No, this one I read just, this myself, like, earlier in the week. That's made me yeah. laugh. It's just too bizarre. Um, <laughs> basically, later on this week, early copies of Mass Effect, fully printed, full proper retail copies. Yeah, Mass Effect 3. Are being launched into space <laughs> on weather balloons <laughs> from certain points around the world, uh, from New York, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Berlin, London, and Paris. <laughs> They're all going to have little GPS trackers on them, which you'll be able to track them from the official that site. That's fucking crazy. And fine, if you can get to where they land, that copy is yours. By the way, just like, well, we've got a bit of time until the game comes out. How can we fuck with people? <laughs> Pretty much. Imagine that image of people in boats if they end up in. I mean, I hope this works because yeah. I'd rather be pissed off people out there if it doesn't. Uh, this is crazy. That's an awesome no, depend- idea. Though. Yeah, depending how the winds are blowing, there's going to be some very happy fishermen in the North Atlantic. <laughs> Maybe, you know. They... But, you know. Well, you, you hang could... on, is this. Is, no, here's the thing though, right? They're putting. Cop- how, right, is it a copy per city? I think so. What format? Ah. Uh... It might be multiple copies. If you get it for PC, ones. you're going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have got PC to run this. Yeah. But may- maybe, because they're all going to be GPS tracking, maybe you'll know which copies are what and going where. Maybe and... there's no actual copies. You just have to get the thing and it just kind of, they say, hey, we'll send it to you. Yeah. Or something we'll... lame like that. I don't know. Like, yeah, let us know what format you want it on. Because surely there's not going to be like a copy on PC, PS3 and fucking Xbox set in a fucking hover balloon somewhere. You never die though. No, there'll be three separate weather balloons. <laughs> anyway, maybe we'll maybe track the shoot them down. maybe track the PlayStation one and the you know who yeah. fucking knows I don't know. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's insane. insane. It's insane. I, I, I'm not desperate enough to like go travelling, but you know, if it comes over Cambridge, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> With a gun. With crazy. a gun. Yeah, not not for the balloon, for all the other people that'll be fighting <laughs> off to get the game. Stupid. Anyway. Uh, right. Next okay, story. So next, next story. <laughs> Valve will make hardware if, if the need arises. Yes. Um, Gabe Newell, he's been talking about sort of where games are going, mm. all that. and Obviously, Valve, they're doing the whole innovation thing. They've done lots of different things. and They haven't changed their engine for a fucking long time. <coughs> That's what they fucking mm. need to do. They need yeah. to build something up. Yeah, so have to run but, the games you know, obviously everybody wants to progress, and there's always that thing is you have ideas what you want, but is the technology capable of it? Mm. And they said if they need to, if they really, really have to, they would consider developing hardware to run their games. Yeah, I mean, how what the fuck do you think they mean essentially for PC? I mean, they are, their focus is fairly strongly on PC. Yeah. Um, is that what they mean? Probably. I mean, but maybe... I mean, we'll see. I mean, he he was going on about how he wants to see consoles sort of expanding more as well. Since the technology inside them is no longer proprietary, a lot of the graphics and everything come from PCs and PC components. Yeah. About being able to expand, and he he's likened what he wants to see happen with like the games, where it's kind of like incremental updates to the game. He'd like to see that with consoles where you could yeah but that's what's that's the beauty of console that's what yeah. personally i'm a console game i buy the console i don't got upgrade shit yeah you know maybe slap a bigger hard drive on it or whatever that's that's pretty much as far as the pimping goes you know what i mean yeah but if valve did release a console or a gaming system how many people do you think would buy it what, the steam box i mean uh, i don't know steam box that's cool yeah no. you should you should throw it at them <laughs> It might hurt. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be big. And <laughs> <laughs> loud. And run on coal. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, okay. Let's get back <clears> on the rails. Yeah, boom, boom. Um, you know, I don't know because... That's the thing. It probably would be a Steam based thing. It would be, yeah. or it would you wouldn't have physical discs to put in there or physical no. media. It'll be downloaded. It'll have a ridiculously big hard drive. I don't... No, really. I mean, it's... Um, Personally, I think they just need to wait it out. I think with between mm. Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, and Apple, and just about... You know, we've, we've pretty much got, as far as... And PCs, obviously. We've got, you know, consoles and gaming kind of covered, I think. I don't think there's a room for Valve to develop their own system. Um, if any company could uh, do it, oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm they sure could. they're tinkering around with the idea and probably prototyping some shit. But I don't see, I don't see it happening. I don't know. No, he did speculate it would be a need arising. They don't actually want to do no, this, but it's they just, would the do it. Arising, they yeah, to. I don't it's, see the need arising at all. No, but console games, console consoles themselves have been pretty much the same. I mean, you know, something you can upgrade and stuff, but that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, you see, I. I'm with you in this. I don't re- really want to see like upgradable consoles because the whole point is you you eke out the fucking uh, generation as long as you can, and you fucking you buy the next thing, yeah. Yeah. So you know this generation you've bought three consoles already. You know you don't want to have to fucking upgrade at each and every single one of those. It's just more money that you're not spending on games. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of why. You know, if I if I had a PC and I was a strictly PC only gamer. I'd probably pirate the fuck out of most of my games because you know you can. Well, I know because <laughs> and then, yeah, you can because at the end of the day, you're spending money on the hardware to fucking play it. That's where the money's going. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm not condoning that shit, but I'm just saying, you know, I can see why a lot of PC gamers do that because, you know, you you talked about the other few weeks back about Crisis Two being like the most pirated game of last year or whatever. Yeah, you know, and that's probably down to a lot of PC gamers and stuff because it's easy for them to pirate and install stuff, and you know, at the end of the day. They're probably paying fucking shitloads of money just to be able to play it on an awesome rig, you know? So I kind of don't blame them in some ways. Arr. I'd say I'm not condoning it, but I'm just saying. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a good, there's a fair argument there, is what I'm saying, yeah, you know, yeah. for and against. You know, it's not right, but, you know, that's what people will do. So, Gabe Newell, Valve, you don't need to do it. Please don't. Anyway, next story. Okay, next story. Guild Wars 2, next MMO heading to consoles. There's this big thing about MMOs on <sighs> consoles. PCs, consoles, here we go again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but um, obviously, 
DC or ooh, DC Universe Online didn't really fail. It's actually seen a big sort of pick up and surge in popularity. It now it's gone, gone free, free to, to play. play. Yeah, but it had to go free to play. I know. But that was the big sort of sticking point is people didn't want to subscribe to it on consoles because, you know, they're paying <clears throat> yeah. for, like, premium online services anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, since it's gone free-to-play, it has seen a surge in popularity and it's doing quite well now. I mean, I've started playing it again. Yeah, I'm sure it is because and you don't have to pay fucking £10 a month where no. it is to fucking get online and play right. it. But with Guild Wars, Guild Wars was free to play from the beginning. The first right. one, completely free to play from the start. The second one is going to be exactly the same. All funded through microtransactions and stuff. So if, if they can make it work, good luck to them. You know, because yeah. it's not happened yet, really, as far as no. solid. Other than DC Universe Online. Um, yeah, there's not been pretty much... There hasn't been really an MMO that's worked. No. Not, there's been a lot of plans that never actually got made. I think... Um, Champions Online was supposed yeah. to be console. Yeah, yeah, and from you know, uh, yeah, that that never really surfaced because I think at the end of the day they know that it's not really going to work. So. No, because they know they're not going to get subscribers on console. It's one of those things you have to kind of adapt it to from day one of development to fit console. Yeah, and if you don't do that, then I think you're screwed. You see, I, I've kind of been avoiding looking at Guild Wars. I enjoyed the first Guild Wars when I had a PC that could run it, <laughs> and you know. I really, really enjoyed it. Then you're like, fuck this, I'm getting a console. Yeah. And um, so I've kind of been avoiding this, and everybody's been saying, oh yeah, Guild Wars 2, it looks so amazing, it looks good. And then I hear this story, and I'm like looking into it, and you know what? It does look pretty cool. So I'm fairly excited about this. Yeah, I mean, it's cool news. It's not, you know, don't get it wrong. It's it, good that it, stuff's it, branching out. But Yeah, it's not going to be launching when the PC version launches. Yeah, launch, is it? <laughs> probably it's, not. It's um, in the preparation stages of development it just, seemed, it are... just sounds a lot like a death sentence for this game to me like trying to put it on a console yeah you know, people mm. have tried and failed and you know pe- some people keep trying and i don't know if they can make it work great that's awesome but, yeah but I, I think it helps i think the free to play from the beginning thing yeah, will help yeah, yeah, yeah. because a lot of where it does fail is they try and get subscribers to do it and you know, I think free to play MMOs probably could work on consoles. I mean, I, I I love MMOs. I love chatting to people, and there's a whole sort of social aspect to console gaming now. Yeah, of like online modes and all this, and you know, MMOs are kind of like a natural progression to that. But it's the the way that they're marketed and the way that they're funded which has held them back. So mm. yeah, you know. okay. Well, I think that's pretty much all the news for this week. Yeah. So, uh going to take another quick well-deserved break and uh, when we come back we talk about this week's releases which there are a number of and the UK sales chart hello and welcome back to part three of the games for all podcast uh, right let's talk about the UK sales chart over to Michelle yes okay here we go at number 10 just dance three at number nine the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim at number eight the darkness 2 at number seven, Skylanders, Spyro's Adventure. At number six, Final Fantasy XIII 2. At number five, Battlefield 3. At number four, Mario and Sonic London 2012 Olympic Games. At number three, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. At number two, FIFA 12. And at number one, UFC Undisputed 3. Say what? <laughs> See now, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, right? Obviously, we knew FIFA 12, Call of Duty, Battlefield, those kind of things. You know. They've yeah, hovered yeah, yeah. pretty much close and to then, the top. And then, like, obviously, UFC Undisputed 3 is kind of like our only release last week. So to see it go to number one is quite, I think it's quite big news, really. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was that popular over here. No. I mean, yeah, you know, don't get me wrong, everyone likes to see people beating the share of each other. Yeah, I yeah, think that's fairly know. universal, isn't <laughs> it, Michelle? <laughs> is yeah. it, right? So, um, but yeah, no, so I didn't, I guess I kind of underestimate the appeal of this game. So, um, yeah, and a bit of a shame the Darkness 2 is kind of on its way out there. Um, Skyrim's still holding in pretty, pretty well, though. It's yeah, good. yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's going down as well. But... And uh, Skylanders has shot up from 14, so that's interesting. It's that Aaron Teague. <laughs> He's he's been he's been he's pimping got, his yeah, but he's got nothing to do with the sales over here. So no, no, yeah. but he he, he, he could have been preaching. Anymore. Maybe yeah. anyway, what's coming out? <laughs> well, as we record on the twenty second of February, yes. so this week, the PlayStation Vita was released mm. here in the UK. Yes, um, with it a slew of new games, and th- th- I have to say there were quite a few games for it. Yeah. 
Oh, I know. That's the one advantage it had over the 3DS. Is it's got it's got it has content. content. Yeah, that's something that they've got right at least from yeah. day one. Yeah, but but some of the premium titles include Uncharted: Golden Abyss, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Rayman Origins, Mortal Kombat, Blaz Blue Continuum Shift Extend. And you get other games which are kind of like less like yeah. L- Lumens and um, Ridge Racer and yeah. I I actually played on a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um. I I did kind of mention this before. Yeah, I just couldn't really. I, I don't know. I was excited because obviously coming out of E three, um, it was the one thing I think over everything that impressed us the most because yeah. like, oh you know, and which is weird because there's usually this sort of thing you know we've we've ripped the piss out of like the PlayStation Portable. And whatever the PSP go, and it fucking went, and you know <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, we kind of, I kind of thought, you know, this could be a legitimate, you know, thing for Sony. This could be their real like. This is pretty much their last attempt at I think a handheld. And if this fucking doesn't work, then you know they probably won't, you know, put money into making any more handhelds. But it seemed like there's a lot of promise there. Um, I got my hands on one, and it kind of from the first minute I touched it, it felt cheap. I don't, I don't want to say that because I'm not a like I'm a tie a, hooker. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it was just kind of like it didn't feel as kind of solid as I wanted it to, um, you know. And when you really think about it, when you boil it down, all the technology that's in it, which albeit very impressive, is stuff that's been around for a while. So they've just kind of thrown it all together. They've basically put a bigger screen on a PlayStation Portable, added dual thumbsticks, a touch screen at the back, and a and touch screen on the front. And Uncharted. Don't get me wrong, you know, that fucking game is going to be worth, you know, to some people, getting a, a Vita, and it's going to look amazing on it. Don't get me wrong. But there's an equal amount of shit on that as well. Because I played a few things on it. It was on a kiosk, and there was a lot of demo shit on that. And most of it sucked. I'm sorry, but that's... And it just didn't... And I was kind of disappointed. I really wanted it to be good. And I think other than, you know, Uncharted, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Mortal Kombat, and, you know, Little Big Planet or whatever else, you know, the the, the kind of big titles, they're the ones... Wipeout. Yeah, Wipeout. Those are the things that are going to be worth getting for it. Yeah. I think everything else... Suck my balls. (laughs) Everything else... We're going back to that tie hooker again. Um, Everything else, uh, just, you know... Isn't you know it's going to be a, a, a very large amount of crap for this that isn't going to look very good. Yeah. Well, some of the stuff I played didn't look great, um, and then some of it did. So it's a bit hit and miss as far as them like developers utilizing the hardware in it. I think you know you may want to check out the games before buying them for this system. But you know, great lineup for its its launch. Don't get me wrong, and I hope it does well. Yeah, but don't expect it to be this. I don't know. I guess I had like majorly high hopes for it. It just felt like they'd throw a bunch of stuff onto a PlayStation Portable and kind of said, "Yeah, that'll do." <laughs> I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. I'm not a. I'm not trying to be a hater or nothing, but you know, that's just it. What, I'm not uh, going to be a hater or anything, but I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. I just didn't. I just kind of thought it was going to be more than it was. non Yeah. There you go. Um, there are other non Vita related releases coming out as you're listening to this cool. on Friday the twenty fourth. You've got Syndicate mm. on three sixty PS three and PC. That. It's that's, that's fine. Yeah. fine. I'm I'm talking here. <laughs> yeah, you carry on. Yeah. Um it's the first person shooter reworking of classic strategy series. Made by uh the developers of the Darkness, the first yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, so it could be quite good. I, I'm, I haven't played the demo yet. I've, I've said it. I might try this out and see if yeah. it's any good. I've heard the single player campaign is fairly sort of standard shooter, standard mm. length, but it's really good sort of co op mode. Okay. Kind of yeah. raises it, makes it something a little bit good. So right. we'll see about that. We've got the last story on the Wii, which is probably going to be the last great Wii game. And the last story. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's JRPG done by. Um, I think it's Mistwalker Studios, same people who did Lost Odyssey. Oh, right, okay. Way yeah, yeah, back yeah, yeah. when. Um, looks pretty good. A lot of people are excited about this. I may pick this up. Hmm. We'll see. I, I've, I've kind of been... I've been Wii stuff lately. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, it's odd. It's after playing after playing the Halloween special. <laughs> some <laughs> of the worst what, Wii games think ever. What you've done, I, I, I think I'm trying to like make the Wii less scary. Because okay, yeah. it's been staring at me, and I've been like... 
oh, fuck off, you scary piece of shit. So now I'm playing stuff that I actually like on you it. You scary and... plastic bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I've, 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 I've picked up quite a few games for the Wii. It, it's shocking, but I've actually really enjoyed them okay, and cool. really hoping to play more. Um, Binary Domain is out this week yeah I'm interested now you've, you've, you've sold me on the demo I'm at least playing that so yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll see if, I'm, if I am impressed I, I may pick this up yeah we'll see yeah and um, Azura's Wrath 360 mm. PS3 that's the anime fighting yeah I've not as a game. I've not downloaded the demo I've played any, I've, I've not seen much about this and kind so of vis- visually anything. it's stunning it's from the Capcom action, right yeah mm. the action set pieces are amazing there's actually there's very little gameplay in there Mm, but what there correct. is is fairly good. Have you heard this story uh, to bring it up? There's, they've done it again. Spelling mistakes on the boxes. Really? On the back of Azura's Wrath, uh, they can't spell challenges. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> look it up. I will yeah, look it up. It's pretty awesome. Um, quick question. Are any of these available on Steambox? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, that's the show. Um, thank you very much for listening, downloading, as always, and subscribing. You can do so over iTunes. Just uh, search for us, the Games Rule Podcast. Uh, you can also check out Games for All Extra, which is our video podcast. Plenty of episodes of that, um, including the Halloween special, which you just mentioned. Please check that out. Um, what else? Our website, gamesforallpodcast.com, has pretty much everything you're going to need. Uh, all our audio episodes, all the video stuff, all our bonus content. Everything's pretty much there, even photos of our ugly mugs. Uh, all of that's on there. Um, Facebook- Facebook.com forward slash Games for All. <laughs> So I'm used to saying it. I want to, I want to it's actually, contribute. It's actually for the oh, Games oh, oh. podcast, but okay, whatever. Oh. If you're going to contribute, get it right. I'm just okay. <laughs> yeah. Facebook.com forward slash Games for podcast and Twitter.com forward slash Games for That's you the go. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you've really thrown me off. I spent weeks kind all of right, sorry, learning sorry. all these. And also check yeah. out our Tumblr blog. Oh, it's now going to take over from everything once uh, we've, we've kind of surpassed the 100 episode mark. Um, that is... The games for all podcast dot tumblr dot com, I do believe. Uh, I really hope I got that right. <laughs> Tumblr spelt weird. Oh uh, yeah, it's true. We should probably mention that. Tumblr. T U M B L R. Yeah. So <laughs> Tumblr. Yeah. So also time to pimp out our friends, not literally. Uh, <laughs> over at the Underground Geek Network. Uh, I check- don't know, I think we could get some sweet cash for Aaron. <laughs> Maybe. He is quite, a tasty he'd treat. Probably quite enjoy it as well. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, yeah, check out our good friends over at the Underground Geek. Now, we were on their latest episode, I think episode 26 of their show, uh, their Valentine's Day special. Fuck knows why we was on that. We kind of hijacked uh, yeah. it a little bit. So, <laughs> please check that out. Um, they're good friends of the show. You know, um, they're awesome peeps, and I'm sure we're going to get them on our last episode as well. That's the plan. Um, yeah, undergroundgeeknetwork.com. And, uh, also, we may be contributing to them. Yeah, we, we may do. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we're in talks about that, I guess. And, so, if um, you're listening, we may turn up. We may show up us. on New Gen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the show that's pretty much for for all, all, everything geek, for me. really. For yeah. me, for James. Yeah. So, if you're James, go download that. So, um, I will. Thank you for listening and have a great weekend. And we will be back, all three of us, back next week with episode 92. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. For more episodes of the Games Raw Podcast, check out our website, www.gamesrawpodcast.com. You can also follow us at twitter.com forward slash games for all, or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash games for all podcast. The Games Raw Podcast is brought to you in association with HostGator. For all your web host needs, check out hostgator.com.